Machine shop. Yeah, boy. Even after putting so many hours into Outward, it turns out I still haven't done everything. And the other day I realized I never took the Exalted passive. This is a choice you can make if you take the Holy Mission faction quest. At the very end, you can choose to fight some Scourge or help save the Queen of Levant by taking on the corruption inside her. Usually, I choose the Scourge because helping the Queen grants you Exalted. It's an insanely OP passive that grants you two times more damage, negative 30% stamina and mana cost, and plus 10% damage resistance to everything, which is obviously really awesome. But this passive also kills you eventually. You'll be inflicted with Life Drain. This does nothing at first, but every 10 in-game days your character will get a massive cut to his or her health. It starts out at negative 30%, then goes to negative 60%, and finally to negative 90%, which left me with around 15 health in total. Not really enough to survive anything. If you die while at the final stage of Life Drain or Life Drain 3, your character dies for good. You're sent to the in-between where Elat lives and can never leave. This is a very interesting passive, and don't be worried about taking it on accident because the game asks you about three times if you really want to do it. But what exactly does it look like when you take this passive? There are some pretty cool aspects of the game you only get to see if you choose this path, so let's take a look at them. The first cool thing you get to do is go to a new realm. While the warriors outside fight off the Scourge, you enter a Bright Realm and need to defeat these metallic-looking shell horrors. They're pretty neat, and some of them even have increased size. But they seem to all die in one hit. Kind of anticlimactic, but still cool. And to be fair, they throw three of them at you at one time? That would be quite challenging if they didn't die in one hit, so it makes some sense. After defeating one, then two, and then three shell horrors, you exit the realm having stopped another Scourge outbreak and allowing Queen Calexa to ascend to godhood. And that's about it. You're given the exalted passive and left to do what you want. Now the interesting thing is that you can die as many times as you want during this process. The dying for good only comes into play with the life drain three stage. Which means you get about 30 days to be overpowered. Not really enough to do Caldera's questline, but still plenty of time. I ended up just sleeping over and over to speed up the life drain timer. I wanted to see exactly what it looked like, and it's similar to your other buffs. It displays it in the bottom left section of your screen, and since it's always active, you won't have it go away. I will mention that the passive stats you get from the exalted passive are crazy. When paired with a dagger build, you can kill enemies extremely quickly. Backstab and Opportunist Stab in particular seem to be ridiculously strong. After dying in some poison water for the fun of it, I was sent to the In-Between, a place of neither death nor life. And you get some dialogue as well. We've all dreamed of being heroes, haven't we? Chosen by destiny, given sacred protection, unrivaled ability. Divine heroes walk among us, and for a brief moment, you were one of them. You gave your mortal life so that another could live. Even now, as your vision dims forever, the impact of your deed remains a key part of the history of Arai. As you feel yourself being pulled towards what lies beyond to join your ancestors, you can't help but feel pride at what you accomplished. Once inside, it's just you and Elat. This domain is extended endlessly and is full of this bright, writhing light that zigs and zags around you. It's quite the spectacle, actually. After speaking to a lat, which is the only thing you can do here, you find out that the others have all moved on. I assume this refers to the others that helped save Calixa and also gained the life drain status. What's really neat about this, though, is you can ask Elat some questions, and his answers were quite unexpected. I'm going to read them to you here in a sec, but for this playthrough, it's important to note that I did not stop Vendival Fortress from destroying Sierzo. I let it happen, and it turns out this affects Elat's answers here. Perhaps I can lay your concerns to rest then, or at least I can keep you company until you're ready to move on and meet your ancestors. 
I want to ask about people I care for. Risa has retired as Chamber Lady. The loss of Sierzo hurt her deeply. I don't know if it will ever be rebuilt after what happened. She wishes you had chosen to become part of her family, but accepts that you did what was right for Ari. Oliel is doing well. She has committed to the Philosopher's Path of the Holy Mission. If she continues her work at her current pace, she will likely be ready to become a disciple in less than two years. She misses you, but does not grieve. Yazan. Hmm. Ah, there he is. He sails the sea near Oroshi. He has made his peace with no longer having a home, and has returned to his merchant ways. He will be alright, I think. He regrets his actions, but is determined to do better in the future. Eleonora remains thankful for your sacrifice in her place. She has redoubled her efforts to preserve the joy and peace of everyone in Monsoon. I have no doubt that she will live enough for both of you. I want to ask about places I've been. Sierzo remains destroyed. I doubt it will ever be rebuilt. You can rest at peace knowing that the ones who destroyed it have since turned on one another, and none remain alive. Justice has, in some small way, been served. Berg has changed for the better. Sagard Battleborn has handed his role as Chamberlord to Gabriella Sullivan, who is ruling it very fairly. I foresee great things in Berg's future. Levant is greater than I could have ever dreamed. Calixa was a fine choice for Goddess and continues to uplift her city. I thank you for helping her ascend, Exalted. Monsoon is doing well. Your deeds are remembered fondly, Exalted. Many new missionaries have joined, hoping to one day be considered your equal. You can rest easy and proud. I want to ask about you. I am proud of what you've accomplished, you know. When you first stood before me and swore to work with me for the sake of R.I., I knew you had great potential, but you surpassed my hopes considerably. Your willingness to volunteer for that final task, even when it was not required of you, was impressive. I will not forget it, Exalted. You've left behind quite an impressive legacy. I still seek a way to put an end to the Scourge forever and I do foresee several groups with their own plans to do so. All I can do is trust that together we can find a way. If the last century has proven anything, it's that humanity is resilient. Thank you for talking with me, Elat. You're welcome, Exalted. It is the least I can do. I will remain here if you wish for more company, until you are ready to let go of this life and move on to the next. Take the time you need. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is what happens if you take the Exalted Passive in Outward Definitive Edition. This is pretty cool as it's technically an alternate ending to your story. One of the very few where you're just unable to play the game anymore. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, feel free to leave a like down below. As always, thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time.